interesting to me too is when someone dies in this country right now, they're not talking about the high blood pressure, the diabetes, the stroke. They say, did they die from COVID? There's, as you, I, we've been to hundreds of autopsies. You, you don't talk about one thing. You talk about comorbidities. Their vessels were narrowed. Their lungs were a smoker. COVID was part of it. It is not the reason they died, folks. It is one of many reasons. So to be so simplistic to say that's a COVID death because they have COVID, you know how many people die with pneumonia or people that die from flu? With flu, I should say. It's not from flu. Their, their lungs were compromised by COPD. They had a heart attack two years ago. They have a weakened body. We aren't pressured to test for flu. <clears throat> But ER doctors now, my friends that I talk to say, you know, it's interesting, when I'm, when I'm writing up my death report, I'm being pressured to add COVID. Why is that? Why are we being pressured to add COVID to maybe increase the numbers and make it look a little bit worse than it is? I think so. So this is what I'm hearing from physicians I talk to in Wisconsin, New York, and everywhere. So you think that physicians are being pressured to make the numbers look worse than they are? They're, they're being pressured to add it to their diagnostic list. And so where is that pressure coming from, in your opinion? Well, it, it's, I don't, I, I probably coming from the administration. So from, their, their administration, the administration is saying, the administration? it's probably coming from the hospital administration. I didn't ask them specifically, but they said, we're being pressured in-house to add COVID to the diagnostic list. When we so think it has nothing to do with a possible uh, incidence or prevalence, of 4.7 million. That means you have a 0.03 chance of dying from COVID-19 in the state of California. 0.03 chance of dying from COVID in the state of California. Is that, does that necessitate sheltering in place? Does that necessitate shutting down medical systems? Does that necessitate people being out? I received an email last week from the Department of Health coaching me on how to fill out death certificates. And I've never really received coaching from the vital statistics uh, agency in terms of how to do a death certificate. But basically, I felt like they were saying, you know, you don't have to have a confirmed laboratory test for COVID-19 in order to make the death certificate be COVID-19. So wait, 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 wait. Um, uh, sir, 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 I don't mean to interrupt you, but that and what you just said, I think is critically important. Can you repeat what you just said, please? Well, last Friday, I received a seven page document that sort of told me that if I had an 86 year old patient that had pneumonia, but was never tested for COVID-19, but sometime after she came down with pneumonia, we learned that she had been exposed to her son who had no symptoms, but later on was identified with COVID-19, that it would be appropriate to diagnose on the death certificate, COVID-19. Now we've not done that. If someone has the pneumonia after, and, and it's in the middle of a flu epidemic, and I don't have a test on influenza, I don't diagnose influenza on the death certificate. I will say uh, this elderly patient Sir, died of pneumonia. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, I, my heart is sinking right now as you're telling me this. You're, you're a doctor. Why in the world would they be sending you out information to fill out death certificates, whether the person's been diagnosed with COVID-19 or not, but then to say in the death certificate, this person's death was caused by COVID-19? That, that does not sound right to me. I went to the person in our office who does most of the death certificates over the last you know, 10, 20 years, and I said, does this sound right? I had her look at the documents that I printed it off, and she said, well, we've always been told that you always put down just facts. You don't put down any probabilities. You don't put any Another allocation. Hospital administrators. Hospital administrators might well want to see COVID-19 attached to a discharge summary or a death certificate. Why? Because if it's a straightforward garden variety pneumonia that a person is admitted to the hospital with, if they're on Medicare, typically the diagnosis related group lump sum payment will be about 5,000. But if it's COVID-19 pneumonia, then it's 13,000. And if that COVID-19 pneumonia patient ends up on a ventilator, it goes to 39,000. Now I can demonstrate those facts to you and I've been fact checked and I've sent it out to different news sources. I didn't make these things. These are serious people who've done this for a living for decades. They have in their hands the largest currently available data sets on this question. And the question they're asking after analyzing all of those numbers, are the lockdowns worth it? So what is the answer to that? 
What's so striking is that so many politicians, the ones enforcing the lockdowns, don't seem at all interested in asking it. Instead, they're bullying forward as if nothing has changed. Just today, the San Francisco Bay Area announced it'll be extending its lockdown until the end of May. That's five weeks from now. What is the scientific justification for doing that? They didn't tell us because there is none. None. You may remember what they first told us back in February and March. They said, we have to take radical steps in order to, quote, flatten the curve. Well, six weeks later, we're happy to say that curve has been flattened, but it's likely not because of the lockdowns. The virus just isn't nearly as deadly as we thought it was. All of us, including on this show, everybody thought it was, but it turned out not to be. Hospitals never collapsed. Outside of a tiny number of places, they never came close to collapsing, at least not from an influx of infections.